Uh, let's do a quick preview of what we did last uh, class. So basically we were talking about different kind of fields like stress fields. We tried to understand what stress really is in terms of area vector and the force uh, in the normal as well as tangential direction. Uh, we also discussed uh, some basic differences between volume and surface forces and you know uh, some examples were kind of uh, coined like for example uh, gravity is a big volume force, it is a body force whereas uh, forces related to viscosity are more uh, predominantly on the surface so they are surface forces. Uh, we talked or described the stress tensor which is essentially a, a matrix, uh, con a 3 by 3 matrix where you have the principal stresses uh, in the diagonal element and the non-diagonal elements of the shear stress components. Uh, we described uh, a basic uh, notational classification of uh, how to represent the stress. Tau y x would mean uh, there is a force in the x direction and uh, uh, it is along an area vector pointing towards the positive y direction. That is how we call it tau y x. So, it is a stress uh, which is shear. Uh, so, area vector uh, with which this, is, uh, this force is associated is in the y direction and the force itself is in the x direction. So, we, we saw that basic classification, uh, we tried to derive uh, the basic uh, Newton's uh, law for viscosity of uh, Newton's law for viscous, uh, viscous motion of fluids wherein uh, correlation was drawn out between uh, the shear stress tau x y with uh, uh, the, uh, the rate of deformation du by dy and uh, uh, we classified different fluids as Newtonian, non-Newtonian, uh, Newtonian wherein this stress and uh, the velocity gradient are in direct proportion with each other, constant of proportionality being viscosity uh, which later on got converted into kinematic viscosity because a better physical idea would be to compare uh, the viscosity absolute values with the density of the solution or the medium. Okay. So, then we talked about various different uh, uh, kind of non-Newtonian fluids like uh, pseudoplastics wherein uh, the, uh, the viscosity seems to go down uh, with the deformation rate, dilatant where the viscosity would have a reverse behavior going up with the, the deformation rate and then Bingham plastics which would essentially behave as a solid under a certain up to a certain yield stress beyond which it will follow uh, uh, the path of a Newtonian fluid. And then we talked about thixotropic materials essentially where we described about uh, properties related to you know the variation uh, or the temporal variation of viscosity with time that means uh, the, vis the, the viscosity um, index nita would vary typically temporally uh, with time, it will actually uh, decrease with time. Okay. So, uh, then we were just about uh, describing the, the differences between viscous and inviscid flows. Inviscid flows again definitionally are flows where the viscosity can be treated as 0. Uh, it is uh, normally uh, you know it is really an idealized situation it never exists in nature uh, or there is no fluid in nature which exists with a viscosity of uh, 0 value. But then uh, in macrosco uh, scale flows or in macroscopic flows we can consider a region which becomes inviscid uh, because of uh, being away from a flat plate and we were actually describing the situation by considering what would happen when a flow of some uniform velocity passes over a flat fixed plate. So, so the proximity of the plate does not any more matter uh, to create a velocity gradient. So, those are inviscid regions of the flow. Let us uh, go ahead and actually look at uh, a little more of uh, what really happens when the flow meets a flat plate. So, we were talking about a, a flow coming in the x direction uh, with a uniform velocity let us say u infinity as you can see here and uh, a flat plate being positioned in the o x direction okay, as this and then we were talking about two points a and a dash which were represented as x 1 and x 2 on the x coordinate. So, some conclusions about uh, this uh, process is that if the pressure does not vary in the x direction and the velocity at b would be uniform u infinity. Uh, so, 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 we can uh, assume that uh, it kind of seems reasonable to say that the velocity would increase smoothly from y equal to a to y equal to b. Okay. So, uh, you have a case here where uh, there is no uh, you know gradient of pressure in the x direction here the pressure is pretty much constant 
you assume u infinity to be constant at the ab initio when it has approached the plate then you consider that there is almost always a zone of no slip which comes into this layer which is close proximity of the plate which actually goes all the way up to u infinity beyond a certain y okay and uh, let us say the point where it goes to u infinity is b uh, so there definitely are shear stresses in the region b c c is the point you know at the surface here and b is the point from which uh, the velocity uh, uh, goes back to u infinity and beyond this the flow behaves as if it were inviscid okay that is how uh, we interpreted uh, in the last class. So, so therefore, we know that the shear stresses are present in the region 0 to y uh, b right in this particular region. So, y equal to 0 is this plane and y equal to y b is this plane and uh, essentially for any uh, y greater than y b in this particular case uh, as you see the shear forces are absent because the velocity is now all uniform and is rhyming very well with the initial velocity u infinity. Okay. So, there are no whatsoever shear forces in this inviscid region and the viscous forces or the shear forces are only uh, between uh, the y equal to y b and y equal to 0 in this particular region here. Okay. So, uh, we will just see what happens in x 2 in this particular point. Uh, so, let us look at the velocity profile uh, in, in x 1. Uh, we see relatively slower moving fluid exerts a retarding force on, uh, on the layer above it. Okay. Uh, at, as, as time progresses the effect of this retarding force causes the distance uh, where the velocity is u infinity to increase. Uh, thus at x 2 y b dash has to be further away than this point here which is the point of contact c dash. Okay. So, uh, this is a kind of you know proportionation rule that uh, as the flow enters this region uh, and it is like let us say at point c uh, there is a certain uh, velocity gradient that is established between uh, the 0 point of 0 velocity and uh, you know this b where the velocity is now u, u infinity. But as the flow propagates along the plate this frictional force kind of predominates. Okay. So, therefore, uh, this region here where the velocity would go back to u infinity should definitely increase because there is uh, energy loss in forms of friction uh, as you move from point c to c dash. Okay. Uh, c dash of course, is this new point here as you can see from this arrow. So, if we assume this uh, to happen then uh, we, we can think that you know the fluid is applying a retarding force uh, to the plate. So, the force goes on increasing as it goes along uh, from 0 towards x 2. Okay. So, uh, so, therefore, definitely uh, the y b dash here which is essentially this distance should be greater than y b because it takes a while because the retarding force is more at b dash okay i mean uh, c dash b dash plane this plane and uh, so therefore uh, you know the fully developed flow here up till y uh, which is y b dash should certainly be greater uh, than uh, the value y b okay uh, so we can also uh, kind of reasonably assume uh, that that y c dash so y c uh, and y c dash are pretty much same as you can see here uh, and the reason being that you know the no slip uh, zone would always be kind of um, you know uh, close to the surface it does not go uh, beyond into into the bulk. Okay. So, uh, from our qualitative uh, picture uh, we can see that we can visualize uh, these, uh, these two different flows uh, by a separating layer uh, between them. One where there is a shear which is existing at the bottom starting from the plate all the way up to where the fully developed flow has uh, happened that is u infinity another which is the inviscid region where uh, it starts from the u infinity I mean the fully developed flow and goes into the bulk. Okay. So, the, the layer which is separating these two is also known as uh, what we call the laminar boundary layer. Okay. It is called the laminar boundary layer. So, essentially uh, if we consider the y component of the velocity now there is a very interesting thing which comes out that uh, let us say uh, you know we, we consider the streamlines okay, of the flow 
and uh, as we know from earlier definition what are the streamlines they are tangential vectors uh, or line joining the tangential vectors to the direction of flow of particles okay so that's how streamlines can be categorized so let us uh, consider the streamlines of flow in these two different flow regions okay flow region uh, one here which is the inviscid region and flow different two here which is the uh, the viscous uh, domain and uh, so what what would we what would we need to assume to maintain consistency so uh, so our first inclination uh, would be to draw these streamlines kind of parallel to the to the plate assuming that you know the fluids go past the plate parallelly now uh, interestingly uh, if there are parallel streamlines generated uh, parallel to the surface of the plates and uh, we are saying that in one case uh, there is a lesser amount of velocity which increases all the way to u infinity in another case there is all u infinity there won't be much region much problem in the region 1 or the infinite region but in region 2 definitely there is going to be mass transfer uh, in the y direction right because uh, uh, because of principally you know the amount of feed of a fluid if we want uh, uh, the continuity to be valid or if we want to assume the fluid as a large continuum uh, the there cannot be any gaps in between it can be one indivisible mass of uh, substance flowing over the plate so in that case if there are there is a velocity gradient and there is a tendency of the lower layers uh, you know parallel to the the plate to reach uh, uh, at at a slower rate uh, a certain point uh, the upper layers would move at a higher rate and try to preoccupy that point okay so there is going to be a mass transfer in order to balance such a system of flow okay and uh, this situation doesn't really exist because uh, as we know that there can be a velocity gradient but there cannot be any uh, really any any velocity in the y direction or there can if even if there are velocities in the y direction this continuum failure never happens within within the fluid okay and uh, so so what what is needed to maintain the no mass flow uh, kind of situation uh, that the spacing between the streamlines different streamlines uh, go on increasing uh, you know their distance from uh, the surface the flat surface as the flow uh, goes along okay so the streamlines are all kind of merging out from the point where the flow has just entered uh, uh, along as the flow goes along the surface the flows the streamlines get separated uh, by greater and greater distances okay so they are not really parallelly oriented they have uh, different directions which go on spreading up more and more as uh, as the flow goes along the the direction of the plate so so essentially uh, we conclude that the edge of the boundary layer is not uh, a streamline and just because of uh, you know so, so a streamline is something across which there cannot be typically any any mass transport okay because tangential to the direction of the streamline uh, the particles are all moving their velocity vectors are in the tangential direction to the to the to the streamline so there is no inward radial flow from one streamline to another okay and so the boundary layer uh, which is the separation layer between the inviscid flow which is on the top and the viscous flow which is on the bottom uh, is is uh, really uh, is not a streamline because uh, uh, there has to be uh, kind of you know uh, mass flow to maintain the balance between the lower velocities and the fully developed flow velocity u infinity across this layer so uh, so consequently we conclude that the edge of the boundary layer is not streamline and uh, th there is a there is a flow into the boundary layer uh, assuming the the differences in the velocity across it okay so based on uh, some of these uh, concepts uh, we can divide all the uh, viscous flow regimes into laminar and turbulent okay in uh, laminar regime the flow structure is characterized by laminae or layers and this is the regime where most microflows uh, are kind of packed up and uh, the flow structure in turbulent uh, regime which is mostly a macro scale version of uh, flow is is by random 
three dimensional motion of fluid particles ok. We can also categorize, so we have already classified fluids as uh, viscous and inviscid, we have uh, categorized fluids into laminar and turbulent, we can also categorize fluids into compressible and incompressible and uh, essentially the main difference is that in, in compressible flows uh, there are variations of density along the fluid medium whereas in incompressible flow we assume the density to be uh, just a, a, a constant uh, across the whole continuum of the of the fluids ok. So, the flows in which variations of density are negligible are called incompressible and there where the variations in density are are, uh, are um, substantial uh, they are called compressible flows ok. That is how you divide flows into compressible and incompressible apart from laminar and turbulent and, uh, and uh, viscous and uh, inviscid flows. So, let us now uh, try to go ahead and derive uh, uh, the first uh, uh, equation of conservation of mass or uh, what, what we call the first Navier-Stokes uh, equation ok. So, for that we need to assume again a small control volume. Uh, let us say uh, we are trying to see uh, the, the amount of mass flow into this control volume um, and uh, the amount of mass flow outside this control volume and uh, it is centered around a point O ok and this uh, is further like a cube around this point O with dimensions dx or a rectangle around this point flow to around this point O uh, with dimensions dx, dy and dz in the x, y and z directions. And what uh, we would be looking at that if we do not assume sorry if we assume uh, that there is no creation of mass within this control volume. Uh, so, whatever is inflowing into the mass is exactly the, the control volume is exactly equal to the mass that is outflowing of the control volume. So, this is also known as the continuity equation or the conservation of mass equation and uh, let us uh, try to mathematically or geometrically derive uh, this particular equation. So, let us say we have uh, an x y z uh, direction here with a rectangular coordinate system and uh, we assume a control volume of uh, a rectangular shape uh, oh sorry a uh, uh, cuboidal shape with uh, values uh, d x, uh, d y and d z dimensions ok. Or we further assume this point O around which this control volume is equally spaced or symmetrically spaced and we have three components of velocity u, v and w it is a three dimensional flow. This is the origin 0, 0, 0 and um, we are trying to investigate uh, what happens in this point O ok. So, the very first thing that uh, we would like to investigate is let us say the density uh, given we have a density rho here at point O, what would be the density at let us say rho x plus dx by 2, which is this particular face uh, here, ok. So, this can be expressed again as uh, you know kind of Taylor approximation as rho plus uh, dp or d rho by dx times of uh, dx by 2 plus uh, d rho by dx uh, d 2 rho by dx 2 times of uh, 1 by 2 factorial dx by 2 square so on so forth ok. So, if we assume these uh, dx to be infinitesimally small element and neglect all the higher order terms here the d the, the rho x plus dx by 2 really comes out to be and why we are taking dx by 2 is because we assume this whole length to be dx ok and uh, this at the center. So, therefore, this face this shaded face here is at a distance of exactly dx by 2 from O and that is why the dx by 2 term. So, therefore, rho at dx x plus dx by 2 is nothing but rho plus del rho by del x times of dx by 2 ok. Similarly, u at x plus dx by 2 is essentially equal to u plus del u by del x uh, times of dx by 2 right where 
rho u del rho by del x and del u by del x are all evaluated at O. You have to uh, keep this in mind because we are essentially evaluating what is happening at one of the edges based on the properties of the point O and all these values that means including the change of uh, density with respect to x, the change of velocity with respect to x, the velocity and the density must necessarily be at the point O. So, therefore, um, we can write similar equations for the other phase that is uh, the phase on this uh, negative side okay, this particular phase and here we can say rho at x minus dx by 2 essentially equal to rho minus d rho by dx times of dx by 2 and u at x minus uh, dx uh, by 2 is essentially u minus del u by del x times of dx by 2. Okay. Now, for conservation of mass we in, in say let us say in the one direction or the one dimension we have to necessarily assume that the net rate of mass flux out through the control surface is essentially equal to the net rate of mass flux coming in the control surface. So, this is an assumption or a supposition that we have to uh, necessarily make here. Okay. And so, therefore, uh, we have to really see that there are not only these x phases, but also uh, y phases and z phases and also phases along the minus y and minus z direction. And so, the whole equation can be thought of as uh, you know a, a problem where all these uh, different phases have inflows and outflows and we are trying to see how uh, the, uh, the fluid mass is conserved in this particular case. Okay. So, what we do here is that uh, let us say uh, evaluate let us evaluate the rates of mass flow inflow and outflow at all the different phases. Yeah. So, rate of mass flow through the positive x phase is the one to begin with okay, of the control volume. So, we know the density times of velocity um, is times of area is really the mass per second. Okay. So, density times of velocity times the area of the phase is mass flow per second. So, here in this case we can write the density at x plus dx by 2 times of the velocity at x plus dx by 2 uh, more simplified manner as uh, rho plus del rho by del x times of dx by 2 times of u plus del u by del x times of uh, dx by 2. Okay. And uh, this if multiplied to the face the interfacial area okay, which in this case as you see in case of x is nothing but dy times of dz. Okay. So, this is the area vector of this particular phase. So, you multiply this with the, the area dy dz in order to get uh, the mass flow rate dy dz. So, if you uh, solve this particular equation you have uh, uh, the resolved value as rho u plus uh, dx by 2 times of rho del u by del x plus u times of del rho by del x times of dx by 2 of course plus uh, you have a component here with all the dels okay del p by del x del rho by del x uh, times of del u by del x with the square of dx by 2. Now, we assume that the component uh, dx being very very small into dy dz the area 
the component dx by 2 very very small this actually can be uh, approximated as 0 which eliminates altogether uh, this particular term here okay and so we are left with the equation rho u plus dx by 2 times of rho du by dx plus u del rho by del x times of dy dz and this is nothing but del rho u by del x okay this is a basically it just comes from uh, you know the uh, the differentiation of a product uh, formula okay so that is what uh, the mass flow rate is really towards the positive x phase now let's see what this rate would be uh, at the negative x phase and uh, the only difference in this case would be that the rho uh, and the u both are evaluated at the x minus dx by 2 phase the area vector almost uh, remains same in magnitude dy by dx and so this would typically uh, and of course you have to have uh, okay so the area vector is uh, although it is uh, same in magnitude but it is actually negative in direction it is in the exactly opposite direction it points to minus x side in this case so you have to have a minus sign representing the direction of the area vector dy dA, dz okay so in this case uh, the the expression can be simplified as minus rho u uh, plus uh, one, uh, 1 by 2 1 by 2 times of again uh, del u rho by del x ok uh, whole multiplied by dy dz from these two terms I can further simplify let us say this equation as well as this equation and write it down as rho u dy dz plus half del u rho by del x times of dx dy dz and similarly here we write as minus rho u dy dz plus half uh, so there has to be a, a dx term here I am sorry so half uh, del up by del x times of del x del y del z ok. So that is how the rate at negative x phase is let us do the same for the the negative the positive as well as the negative y phase so for the bottom pointing towards the negative y direction we can represent uh, this as rho at y minus dy by 2 times of u at y minus dy by 2 uh, times of in this case if you look at uh, the area vector in the negative y direction it is dx times of dz ok. So therefore uh, this can be represented as uh, rho y rho at y minus dy by 2 times of u at y minus dy by 2 times of dx dz and this comes out to be again further simplified uh, in a simplified manner comes out to be minus rho v dx dz plus half times of del by del y of uh, u, u rho or v rho really times of dx dy dz ok. So for the top uh, surface pointing towards the plus y direction this would come out to be rho y plus dy by 2 times of u y plus dy by 2 times of uh, dx dz and this if simplified would come out to be rho v dx dz plus half in uh, the differential of with respect to y of uh, rho v of 0 times of dx dy dz ok. Similarly we do the same for 
uh, the, the phase pointing towards the minus uh, z direction and here uh, we can write uh, the velocity vector to be rho at z minus dz by 2 times of u at z minus dz by 2 times of because this is the z direction again the area which would be uh, representing this is dx times of dy uh, dy is this and dx is this direction so it's this interface that is actually being represented here okay so let us uh, write that down as uh, dx dy here and so therefore uh, we can represent uh, this in a more uh, simplified manner as rho w dy dx plus half times of d by dy d by dz times of uh, uh, rho w times of dx dy dz and uh, similarly for the top pointing towards the plus z direction we have rho and this is a minus sign mind you we have rho uh, z plus dz by 2 times of u at z plus dz by 2 times of dx dy which is actually equal to minus uh, uh, which actually equal to rho w dy dx plus half times of del of uh, rho w by del z times of dx dy dz. So, essentially the net uh, mass flux then as I already talked about should be equal to the flow through plus x direction plus the flow through minus x phase plus the flow through the top plus y plus flow through minus y plus flow through plus z plus flow through minus z direction right and uh, we also assume here that uh, if there were uh, so, so make it very generic in nature uh, first of all let us find out what is the summation of all these different flows okay so that comes out to be uh, equal to minus uh, rho u and I am just borrowing these from the earlier expressions that we have derived minus rho u dy dz plus half of del rho u by del x times of uh, dx dy dz plus uh, rho u times of dy dz plus half of del rho u by del x times of del x or dx dy dz plus uh, we have uh, similar terms for um, you know for the for the y plus y minus y and plus z minus z directions let us write them down. So, for the y direction uh, you will have uh, uh, minus uh, let us just uh, erase this particular illustration here give me a minute ok. So, for the minus y direction we have uh, minus rho v dx dz plus half of uh, del rho v by del y times of del x del y del z plus rho v dx dz plus half of del rho v by del y times of dx dy dz and uh, similarly for the z direction you have uh, rho w dx dy plus half del rho 
w by del z times of dx dy dz plus rho w dx dy plus half of del rho w by del z times of dx dy dz. So, interestingly these first terms actually cancel each other as regards the plus x minus x plus y minus y and plus z minus z direction and what you are left with are these second terms here right here uh, which if we uh, you know kind of sum up together uh, we would be getting an equation uh, which is equal to del rho u by del x plus del rho v by del y plus del rho w by del z and uh, del x del y del z as the control volume with respect to this ok. So, so essentially this is really the, the net rate of mass flux, flux out through the control volume surface. So, I can write this as the net rate of mass flux out through the control surface. Now, what is interesting here to point out is that if the rate of change of mass inside the control volume uh, is uh, a function of uh, you know the is a function of time that means there is a mass which is generated or created inside the control volume. In that case uh, we can always write down that the rate of change of uh, mass inside the control volume C v is equal to del rho by del t that means the rate of change of density and this can be a case for compressible flows where there is a rate of change of density with time. For incompressible flows of, flows of course, this d p by d t does not make any sense d rho by d t because it is 0 ok. We assume that the density is constant temporally there is no variation of density with time. Times of the control volume del uh, x del y del z ok. So, in a more generic manner uh, the equations 1 and 2 here which have been derived if added together should give you a situation whether it is for compressible or incompressible comp compressible flows uh, and, and what you can do is that you know the total amount of mass in this manner uh, which either inflows and outflows or gets generated should be equated to 0 because of the conservation of mass. I mean mass cannot be created or destroyed if you are assuming continuum assumptions inside a uh, such a control volume a particular fluid. So, in that case the, the del rho u by del x plus del rho u by uh, I am sorry rho v by del y here plus del rho w by del z plus del rho by del t whole brackets the control volume dy dx dy dz should be equal to 0 and uh, which actually can be in a, in a more abridged manner written down as the grad of uh, uh, so, th so the grad vector dot rho v vector ok. Uh, plus del rho by del t is equal to 0. So, this is what the first of the Navier Stokes, uh, Stokes equations are about continuity or conservation of mass ok. So, typically for an incompressible flow though uh, what we would be left with is uh, just this part of the term ok. So, what we will be left with is just uh, del dot or the grad vector dot rho v vector. So, incompressible flow cases uh, when particularly do del rho by uh, del t is equal to 0 the continuity equation really reduces to del dot rho v vector equal to 0 ok. So, that means uh, the del rho u or del u by del v or uh, l x x uh, plus del v by del y plus del w by del z uh, with the rho taken common out of all this uh, remember in incompressible flows 
this rho does not vary with time or space. Okay? So, there is absolutely no variation in the density. The density either in time or in space both remains same and constant. So, so this is a situation of incompressible flows. And so, therefore, this becomes equal to 0. In other words, uh, del u del x plus del v del y plus del w del z is 0 is the new form of the continuity equation particularly for incompressible flows. Okay? So, let us uh, kind of try to understand this through an example. Uh, let us say we have given uh, the, there exists a two dimensional flow in uh, x y plane for which u becomes equal to a x. Okay? And so, you have to find the possible y component for steady flows, steady incompressible flows using the continuity equation. Okay? And uh, also, how many y components? how many such y components would be possible. So, as we know here del rho by del t is 0 or rho is a constant okay? and uh, therefore, uh, the the whole continuity equation just changes to del cross v vector equals 0 del u by del x plus sorry del u by del x plus uh, uh, give me a minute here plus del v by del y plus del w by del z equal to 0. Okay? So, essentially uh, this uh, means that and, and also we have we already know that uh, the flow is two dimensional. Okay? So, for such a two dimensional flow v essentially should be a function of x y right. The velocity v vector should only be a function of x and y. So, therefore, there is no third component which exists or w equal to 0 in any case. So, for the compressible equation or the, or the continuity equation changes to du by dx equal to minus del v by del y and let us say these all are equal to a constant minus a. Okay? So, so, therefore, uh, we can safely kind of try to integrate and find out uh, the the value for the velocity v. So, as uh, you do that we can get v is essentially integral uh, a dy with a minus sign plus uh, some constant and since we are only uh, uh, this v is never varying in the x direction we can assume a function of x to be constant along the y direction. So, f uh, the v essentially becomes minus a y plus function of x. So, this is essentially invariable in the y direction it is a pure function of x and so therefore, it may be treated as a constant in this particular case. It could also be a normal constant apart from that. So, essentially uh, a possible y component for the steady incompressible flow can be expressed as minus a y plus function of x. Okay? So, uh, you can also say that because there is a function of x involved there are many such uh, solutions of uh, the y component of velocity that is possible using uh, the continuity equation. 
So, let us also uh, do a little bit of different uh, uh, kind of example related to uh, an operating piston and uh, a certain cylinder pressure to understand the continuity equation a little better. So, in this particular example as you see that there is a gas filled pneumatic strut in an automobile suspension system okay, and it behaves uh, like a piston cylinder apparatus. Uh, the boundary conditions that are given is that at one end or at one instance when uh, the piston is at uh, say the total length L equal to 0 0.15 meters away from the closed end okay, of the cylinder, the glass density is uniform at rho is equal to 18 kgs per meter cube and uh, uh, the piston begins to move away from the closed end at velocity equal to uh, roughly about uh, 12 meters uh, per second and uh, the, the gas motion in one dimensional is really one dimensional in this case and proportional to the to the distance from the, the closed end. Okay. So, it varies linearly from 0 to velocity v uh, which means that at two ends at the closed end when the piston is present the velocity is 0 and when it goes to the length L uh, equal to uh, 0.15 meter uh, which is at one end okay, um, from uh, that means this is away from the closed end is farther uh, is the farthest extremity at that uh, the velocity u becomes v. Okay. Uh, so, we have to evaluate uh, the rate of change of uh, uh, the gas density at this particular instance particularly when uh, the piston is at 0 0.15 meters from the closed end and we also need to obtain uh, an expression for the average density as a function of time. Okay. So, we need to find what rho average is in terms of rho t here. So, let us actually try to solve this using continuity equation we have a cylinder here in the in the example three fixed ends and a movable piston let us say here and uh, essentially uh, what, what has been indicated here is that the gas density within this volume is 18 kg per meter cube and uh, this is the closed end and this is uh, the farthest extremity that the piston can travel. And here in the question, uh, this extremity has been given as 0.15 meters. Okay, so essentially, distance here is uh, 0 0.15 meters. So we also further know that uh, the velocity is zero. Let's say we are talking about the x direction starting from 0 here all the way up to L. So, velocity uh, is 0 when x is equal to 0 and the velocity really is v when x equal to this L value and so therefore, and also we further know that uh, as it is given here that uh, the gas motion is one dimensional and proportional to the distance from the closed end. Uh, it varies linearly from 0 to u x because it is a linear variation uh, we can assume that the u is really uh, equal to some constant k times of x uh, v becomes equal to k l because u is v as x is l essentially or k becomes v by l and so u essentially is, a, is again uh, v x by l okay that is how uh, u is so x x equal to 0 u is 0 at x equal to L uh, u is equal to V. So, um, so all said and done this is what uh, the velocity equation is in terms of x. So, we will now apply the continuity equation here we know that by the continuity equation we have uh, del dot rho uh, V vector okay. V is the velocity vector is essentially and plus del rho by del t is essentially equal to 0. Okay. So, del 
uh, rho u by del x plus del rho v by del y plus del rho w by del z plus del rho by del t is equal to 0. Okay? And uh, essentially if we just put the value of u equal to u x this uh, v x by l value and uh, with respect to uh, this is the only velocity uh, mind you this is only a one dimensional case as has been indicated. Okay? Uh, this piston cylinder arrangement and so therefore d uh, v by d0 dv by dy really uh, or dw by dz are both zeros and so the only other value which comes out of this whole del cross rho v is essentially uh, rho del u by del x okay or del rho u by del x all right and so we know that you know from because it's it's actually a compressible flow in this particular illustration we have this plus del t uh, is essentially equal to 0. So, if we um, try to figure out what this value would be del rho by del t becomes equal to minus rho del u by del x minus uh, u del rho by del x. Okay? And uh, as we know that du by dx or dou u by dou x is essentially a constant v by l and uh, therefore, um, we have uh, also the value del p by del t from equation 2 here becomes equal to minus um, rho times of uh, v by l. So, this uh, minus rho v by l uh, minus u del rho by del x. Now, if you look at uh, this is let us say this is equation 3. So, if you really look at the question of the problem statement rho has been assumed uh, to be uniform in the volume. Okay? not with uh, time t. Uh, here the rho is varying with time t, it is temporally varying, but it is not varying spatially really. So, therefore, del rho by del x because it is uniform within the volume is uh, supposedly equal to 0 and uh, we are left with no other choice, but del rho by del t on one side equal to minus rho v by l and that is equation 4. So, let us try to figure out um, what an integration of uh, this quantity would result in and what would really be the density function in terms of uh, the velocity, length, etcetera. So, here uh, we would like to uh, illustrate that uh, the, the length L really is uh, uh, we can assume this to be equal to uh, let us say the initial length L0 that the piston is at plus uh, v times of t, where v is the velocity of uh, uh, the, the, the piston and t is the time of movement. Okay? So, so there is some L0 value, uh, let us say the piston is somewhere, if you see in this particular uh, figure here the piston is at some value uh, when let us say it moves at a certain velocity v uh, this value is maybe l0 and we want to consider any length l which is equal to l0 plus v times t after time t it would be here and this is really the new length l. Okay? So, that is how we define this, uh, this whole uh, length of traverse of the, the piston uh, inside uh, the cylinder. So, if we assume this to be the final length at time t, assuming this to be the, uh, the length in uh, ab initio when the process started, we have uh, integral d rho by rho, uh, where rho varies from let us say some quantity rho 0 to some 
uh, value of uh, density rho t equals integral minus 0 to t v by l dt okay and uh, essentially uh, as you know that this l actually comes from this l0 plus vt so we'll have this as 0 to t thing of 0 to t v by l0 plus vt dt okay and so therefore ln rho by rho naught really becomes equal to ln l naught by l naught plus vt uh, if you just solve this integral it is uh, essentially uh, and, and put the limits 0 and t it comes out to be L0 by L0 plus Vt or in other words uh, density as a function of time really is equal to the density at time t equal to 0 plus 1 by uh, 1 plus Vt by L0 okay. So at time t equal to 0 therefore as the second part of the question assumes uh, the del rho by del t uh, the change of density rate of change of density would be rho 0 v by l and rho 0 being already given equal to 18 uh, kg per meter cube when this is at length uh, l 0 0 0.15 meter this particular uh, length and it is moving to the velocity 12 the, the, the whole uh, density variation with respect to time becomes equal to minus 14 40 uh, kg per meter cube second. So, as you found out here that the continuity equation can be very easily used for this kind of uh, compressible flow problems as well where density varies with time as well as the earlier problem as you saw was that of incompressible flows. So, in micro scale though if you consider uh, the flow mechanics mostly uh, flows are treated to be incompressible and uh, strictly laminar uh, in nature because uh, although there are twin phase flow problems at the micro scale but the modeling becomes extremely complicated and difficult and so we will be limiting ourselves mostly to the, to the single phase uh, flow problem in such a situation. So, this kind of brings us to an end of uh, this particular lecture, uh, we will try to uh, cover up uh, the second uh, Navier-Stokes equation that is the conservation of momentum uh, in, in the next class. Thank you.